Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for a tutorial on how to use motion capture footage in Blender the easy way. Now, there's a lot of different methods to do this, including the built-in Blender add-on. However, there's another resource called Make Human, which I'm sure plenty of you have heard of. There's a lot of other capabilities with it, but we're going to be looking into that and its uh, usability with motion capture. So we'll start off by actually downloading the Make Human program. So if you open up your internet browser, it on the wrong monitor there and you go to makehuman.org all right now makehuman is a free open source software to create realistic 3d humans for illustrations animations games and all sorts of other crap all right so you're gonna come to the download tab over here and you click download make human simple as that and you're gonna download it for whatever operating system you're on if you're on Windows download Windows Linux Linux Mac Mac makes sense so I'm going to download the zip package for Windows, and it's actually going to take a while to download because their servers are not the fastest. Um, I've already got it downloaded though, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, and we'll just jump straight in. So here's the downloaded file. So until yours is finished, I'd advise pausing the video and then come back once you're done. So here it is, and I'm going to open it up, and I have a folder inside called MakeHuman 1.1.0 Win32. We'll just drag that to our desktop, and it'll take a second to move because it is unzipping a file and that's typically not the speediest thing in the world but let's wait <laughs> so one other method that you can use to do this is um, using the blenders built-in motion capture however that takes a very long time because you have to build your skeleton remap all the bones uh, I forgot what the term is but it's basically mapping the animation from one to another and it takes absolutely forever so now that we have our uh, folder here I'm just gonna go ahead and move the zip folder over here but um, let's open it up and inside we can see we have a few different options. We have just a bunch of files. We have makehuman.exe. Um, this is the executable you'll actually be running. Uh, if you'd like to, you can create a desktop shortcut by just right clicking and send to desktop and I'll create a nice shortcut. I'm just going to leave it like this. So what we're going to do is instead of running it right away, we're going to come to the blender tools up here. We're going to right click make walk, go to send to and compressed zipped folder. If you are on a Mac, there should be some way to zip it up, um, put it in a zip folder, something like that. I don't know how to do it necessarily on a Mac, but it's essentially this. So we'll um, save that zip file and we're gonna open up Blender really quick here. I'm using Blender 2.77a for this tutorial. And we'll just come up to here. We don't have to do anything with our scene. We just have to come up to File, User Preferences, or press Control alt u Click install from file and navigate to wherever you saved that uh, the make human file. So mine's on my desktop, so I'll go there, go into Blender Tools, and now select the make walk.zip that we just created and click install from file. Alright, well I got this error up here because I already have it installed, so we'll just it shouldn't give you that error. If it does, there's another thing on the website where you can download the Blender Tools in zip format already. Um, I don't see the point of that, but now if we search up make walk, we can see we have make walk right here. If it's not enabled, make sure to enable it just by taking that little checkbox. Click save user settings, and then we can exit out of Blender. So now we can finally go ahead and open up our make human program by running the makehuman.exe or the shortcut if you created it earlier. So I'm going to run it, and you'll see it comes up with a nice little, uh, I don't even know what to call it here, uh, an, a splash screen I guess. All right, and immediately we have our person right here. Um, there's a lot of different things you can tweak on here, such as uh, some of the main things are gender. If you'd like to create a character, you're welcome to. If you don't want to, that's all right too, um, especially if you're just planning on taking the skeleton from this and remapping it to another model. So you can also tweak things like age, so <laughs> a little baby. It's so uncomfortable watching it transform so quickly. Um, but there's all sorts of different things you can tweak. You can tweak, uh, tweak the how muscular they are, um, their weight, their height, and different proportions. Also, their oh gosh, that's horrifying. You can create some really really scary things with this. Um, I'm just gonna set these all back to around the default. But there's a lot of things you can tweak. Um, I'm not gonna go into that because this tutorial isn't about make human. It's about um, the. But uh, well, you can see just how many topographies we can screw with here, but um, it's not about make human itself, it's about using the motion capture. So I'm just going to make a really cheesy, I don't even know, here we'll give them a casual suit and a, is that a fedora? Yeah, it's a fedora. So we'll give them a fedora and that, 
and then I don't really care about anything else because it's just going to take more time. So what we need to do is we need to come into the pose and animate tab once you're actually here we're given a skin old Asian female there we go all right that's kind of horrifying but <laughs> oh well um, after you're done creating your character if you choose to create a character you can come into the pose and animate tab and what we need to do here is on the left hand side we have these tag filters we're going to uh, check the mocap box and we have this option over here called CMU MB. We click that and we automatically have a rig that's optimized to the same motion capture that um, the motion cap database will be using is. So our, our motion cap database by the way is Carnegie Mellon's motion capture database. It's a huge database, lots of different things. I haven't even been able to go through everything. It's, it's just going to take forever to do that. So finally what we need to do is click export. All right, And then we have a couple different options. We can either export as a day or Collada Day File, Filmbox FBX, Wavefront OBJ, Ogre 3D, or Stereo Lithography. <laughs> that's a mouthful. I usually use Collada because that's just a very simple form. The skeleton's transferred easily. So we'll just save it as Collada, and then we can click. Um, well, we do that, and then we need to name it or set it to a directory. So I'm going to click those little three dots up there. It's going to create a new folder. We'll call it Mocap Character. I cannot spell character. There we go. All right, we're going to open it up and I'm just going to call it person. And you'll see we have that progress bar. And once it's done, it's done. If you'd like to save your file or your uh, make human file, that way you can edit it later, you're welcome to. I'm not going to because all I needed was the armature and the crappy 3D model. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this make human folder. I'm going to move this over to my other monitor. You don't have to. I'm going to get rid of this because that's interesting. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna hop into Blender now. And I'm just gonna delete everything in the main scene here. And I'm gonna come to File, Import, Collada, DAE, Day, whatever it is. And I'm gonna go to my desktop, to wherever, or to wherever I saved it. I saved it to my desktop in a folder called mocap character. And we have person.day. I'm gonna click Import Collada. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. And I'm not going to worry too much about the um, the textures themselves because uh, I'm not really worried about texturing right now. All I worry about is the um, mocap. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to try and select the skeleton. <laughs> you can see it sticks out of the knees just a little bit. If you can't get it, you can press Z and then you can select it easier. Um, and we're going to come over to the armature settings over here. And we're just going to check x-ray. Now if you'd like to change the bone type, I like stick bones because they're nice and thin and allow me to see through everything. Now if we go into pose mode, you can now see that we can easily pose our character, just like that. And of course some of these are kind of funky, but we can pose our character and that's what matters. It's uh, paired, or not paired correctly, but it's um, weighted correctly and that's what we're looking for. So now that we have our um, person imported into Blender, we're going to go ahead and go to Chrome or whatever internet browser you use and we're just gonna look up Carnegie Mellon motion capture BVH I'm gonna leave a link to this exact website down in the uh, description of this video um, it's a Google site so it's safe and it basically just has all of the different Carnegie Mellon um, motion capture footage I guess stored in a uh, BVH format in a zip file and it's really useful it's just a bunch of things um, collided together. I'm going to download just any random one. I'm going to download, let's say, 113 through 328. Alright, it's going to bring me to Mediafire, and I'm going to download it. And it shouldn't take too terribly long, so we'll just wait for this to finish, and I'll be right back once it's done. Five, four, three, two, one, and it is done! Alright, <laughs> so that took longer than expected, but when I open it up, you can see I get this full on list of different. Um, motion capture things, motion capture folders. We can exit out of this and if you get an ad like this, you can exit out of that too. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag one of these out on my desktop. Um, one useful thing that comes with this is an index. Uh, of X, It's an Excel file and it shows what everything is. So the um, the first number is the, uh, the section, so 113, if I wanna know what was in 113. Let's scroll down, you can see this one's 88, 103, 113. 
So you can see 113, the first one in 113 is a walk backwards. 11303 is a curtsy. 11304 is a dance. I'll use the dance, I think. Yeah, I'll use the dance. So we'll see how this goes. So we'll import 11304. So I'm gonna drag the 113 folder to my desktop. And if we open it up, we can see all the different things, 11301, 11302, 11303. And this is the one we're gonna be using. So we're gonna come into here, and with our armature selected, we're gonna go over to the make walk thing here. We're gonna click load and retarget. Retarget's the word I was looking for earlier. We're gonna to navigate to wherever we extracted the folder with the motion cap file, and we're gonna import whichever one we'd like. I'm using 11304. All right, and you'll notice it immediately puts them in a T pose, just standing over here, right? And if we click play, we immediately have motion captured footage. It's as easy as that. You don't have to remap any of the bones. It is pretty much the easiest thing in the world. And we can do that with whatever we'd like. So if we'd wanna see what, um, let's see what this one is, 11308. Okay, so yes, some of them are a little bit glitchy, <laughs> but it's a person that goes and lays down. It's simple as that. And let's say we wanted 11326. just a person walking in a circle. And if you remember, uh, 11301 was somebody walking backwards. So we'll go ahead and grab that right now. And some of these are longer than 250 frames, so it sometimes helps to expand it to maybe 1,000, or not 100. There you go, person walking backwards, just like that. And it's just motion captured footage as easy as that. Now say you want to do, actually, that's kind of weird, playing it backwards is funky. Um, but anyway, let's say you wanted to remap this onto something other than the model that came with it. What we can do is we can actually, while it's in the T-pose right here, we can delete everything that we have. So we'll delete the clothes, the hat, the head, the eyeballs, and the shirt shoulders. And that just leaves us with the armature, which we can then edit. So if we go into edit mode, and we want it to make like a T-Rex or something, what we could do is we could reposition all the different bones. It's gonna take a while, it's gonna be a little bit of work. I mean, of course, it does take some work to remap it to another model, but all you have to do is really edit the, um, the, what's my call it, the skeleton. And I mean, I'm doing this really bad, but it's the kind of, it's just kind of to get the point across that you can really just create anything with it and it'll work. All right, so we'll pretend this is some sort of T-Rex, but if we exit out of edit mode now, we can see that just like that, we now have what very vaguely looks like a T-Rex. It's kind of horrifying to watch actually, but we have what very vaguely looks like a T-Rex walking backwards. We can. It's a lot easier to do if you have an actual mesh to map it to. I don't have a T-Rex mesh. Actually I do, but it's not easily handy, so we'll just call it this for now and we'll pretend that's a T-Rex. It requires using your imagination, you know? So that's about it. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can see there's a bunch of options. There's a bunch of different um, editing animation things. You can smooth out the animation with it. I'm not gonna go into that stuff because that's a whole new video on its own. Each one of these sections actually probably has its own video. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. But, but anyway, I hope this helped you guys figure out how to do motion capture in Blender the easy way. And it's a lot easier than doing the other way. Trust me, I've tried about 10 different methods. And they're all absolutely excruciating. And this one's literally just as easy as snapping your fingers. So big shout out to Make Human for making such an awesome program that has such great compatibility built right into it. It's really awesome. But if you learned something, be sure to drop a like down below so other people know that this video is an awesome video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to hit subscribe down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Adios.